In this video, we're going to learn how to build immersive apps in VisionOS. We can change the level of immersion the user experiences. For example, if I set to say 30%, you can see it's like a portal into the virtual world. So let's get started building this thing. On. So first thing, as usual, we'll create a VisionOS app. So I'm going to name it VisionOS VR. So choose the initial scene of window and save it wherever you want. And there we have a starting view. As you can see, our app starts in a shared space. Just a quick recap, a shared space is where your app sits alongside other apps and does not block the real world from you. On the other hand, a full space is where the user completely focuses on your app. And within a full space, you can have different modes. Full mode, the user experiences a virtual world and all pass through from the device is blocked, which means the user won't see any of the real world at all. There's also the progressive mode where the user can tune or dial in the level of immersion he or she wants to experience. And finally, there's the mixed mode, which is basically augmented reality. Mixed mode does not really work well in the simulator, so we're not gonna explore that here. So first, we'll start with the shared space. Here, we're gonna create a simple button, which when you click, will take us to the virtual immersive world, which in this case would be a beautiful starry night. So let's do that first. I'm gonna delete everything that we have here first. I'm going to create a simple button, which would be an icon of the Vision Pro device. I'm going to choose this guy here, button action with a label. So action is what you execute once the button's pressed, do something. And the label is the icon of the button. So the label bit, we're going to add in the image, which will be the icon of the button. So we're going to choose image system name. So there's an icon for Vision Pro, which is what we've used exactly here. So that's the button ready. Now, obviously the window is a little too big. So I'm gonna go back here. This is the starting window of the Vision OS app. So we're gonna set the default size of this window to something smaller. So I'm gonna choose say a size of 10 and size of 10. I'm also going to make the window style plain. So plain. Now we see it's a lot better, right? It's much smaller and looks nicer. The next thing we want to do is when we click on this button, we want to enter the virtual world. So if you remember, this is the starting point of our app. This is where we define all the windows, volumes, and spaces for our app. So currently we got one window, which is the content view. Let's rename this to immersive control view. Again, this is the VR button that when we press should open up the VR environment and exit from the shared space. Now let's create that VR environment. This will be done in what you call an immersive space. So immersive space, I'm gonna give that an ID of say, immersive view and then in here we'll present our vr environment or the vr view that we'll create and now for the immersive space we can define the type of immersion that we want so for that we'll use the immersive style modifier so this sets the allowed styles for the immersive space and here we'll choose full space the full space is where we completely immerse the user in a virtual world and here we need to create a binding variable. So we're gonna create a state var and immersion mode. This is of type immersion style. And this would be, let's say by default full. I'm gonna tie that state variable here by a binding variable. So we got an immersive space and an immersion style of full. So this means whenever we open this scene, the immersive space, the entire pass through of the Vision Pro device will be blocked, meaning we will be completely immersed in a virtual world that we design. And now let's design that virtual world. More specifically, let's design that VR view here, which will present when we enter the immersive space. The way SwiftVR works is by default, it will open the first scene that's presented in this list, which is just the control window in a shared space. And then later we'll programmatically open this immersive space. And once this space is opened, the VR view will be presented and the camera pass through will be blocked, meaning whatever's presented here would be what the user sees. The user will not see any bit of the real world. That's what the full style immersion mode does. Now, before we design the VR view that we'll show when the immersive space is opened, let's actually write the code to open the immersive space. So we want to open the immersive space when we click the button, right? To do this is quite simple. Environment, open immersive space. You can see it's an action that presents an immersive space and we're gonna call it open immersive space. And then similarly to dismiss a space, we got environment and then dismiss immersive space. Again, this is the dismissal action stored in the views environment for the immersive space. So dismiss immersive space. 
So these two are essentially actions stored in the views environment. So if you don't know what environment values are, environment values are literally stuff stored in the views environment, which lives as long as the app is alive. So we just got access to that action here. And now to present an immersive space, I'm going to type in open immersive space. This has an ID and the ID would be immersive view. Just make sure you copy exactly the guy here. Awesome. So now there's an error saying a sync call in a function that does not support concurrency. Because this is in a synchronous task, we're going to put this inside a task and then use the await prefix here. So this is how you call asynchronous functions in Swift. Yeah. Great. So now if I click build and run, now if I click on the VR button, it should open the immersive space. It's giving in a system alert, warning us that we're about to enter a uh, immersive space and be aware of your surroundings. Make sure your cat is away and make sure if you have any glasses, they're away. So now we've entered the VR world. Now you can see, we still see the window, which is great, but the VR world, if we look around, it's just all black, right? This means it's working because what's happening here is we've opened the immersive space and we've entered the full style immersive space, which means the entire camera pass through is blocked i.e. the user sees none of the world outside, but only what you define inside this immersive space. It's rare that a VR environment is just a black space, right? That's pretty depressing. So now let's make this immersive space a bit nicer. So now let's create the immersive view that will be displayed in the immersive space. So I'm gonna create a new view called immersive view. Obviously this view is not created yet, so let's go create that now. So new file, and then click Swift your view, and name this immersive view. Great, so now this is just an empty view at the moment. So now let's build this thing out. So if you remember from our previous videos, the best way to display 3D content is using what you call a reality view. Reality view is a view in Swift UI that is specifically tailored for rich 3D content. So a content contains all the entities that's inside the reality view. So by default, it's an empty view. So there's no entities at all at the moment. So let's go create our first entity. The first entity will be the immersive sky environment. So if you remember from the demo, we had the starry night that's surrounding us. That's the immersive virtual world you're in. And we want to create that entity. And now to do this, we're going to create a skybox entity and then add that to the reality view. Now, what is a skybox? So this is a popular technique used in building 3D games where you essentially have a large sphere or a cube and you cover that large cube with an image. Uh, you call that the skybox. So simply put, in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to create a large sphere, like a really large sphere, and cover that sphere with a texture of a starry night. That way, when we look around, it gives us the illusion that we're immersed in a starry night sky. So this will become clearer as we implement it. Also, in the next few videos, we'll be going into more detail of what skyboxes are. But for now, just remember that skyboxes is what you use to create that illusion of an immersive environment. So that's what skyboxes are. I'm going to create a separate function, private func create skybox. And this function should return an entity which represents the skybox. Now to create the skybox, we need a mesh and a material applied onto the mesh. And the material would have a texture of that starry night image. So let's first create the mesh. The mesh is going to be just a large sphere. Just make sure you input reality again. So mesh resource dot generate sphere and we need to make this really large. So let's give it a size of 1000. And then we want a material. So let skybox material. This is going to be an unlit material. Again, comes with reality kit. And now we're going to apply that starry night image to this skybox material. So let's first import that image. So new image set, I'm going to call it starry night. I'm going to import this image that I have, which is that of a starry night sky. Obviously, you can Google in the internet and find a similar image that represents a starry night sky. Then you go back to the immersive view. And now we're going to create a texture. So let texture equals texture resource dot load. And the texture is named from our assets. We want to use this image for the texture, right? So we're going to go here and then we're going to import that image here. So here we're simply loading the starry night image here. We're placing this function in the wrong area. so. It's not here, it should be outside the body. Great. And now it says call can throw, but it's not marked with try and the error is not handled. So this guy can throw. So we're gonna do a do and then bring that here. 
and then we're going to add a try here because the call came through and if there's an error in loading the texture we're going to catch that error i'm going to name it let's say error loading texture and print the error awesome so that's great so now we got a skybox material and we got a texture which represents the starry night image now we want to apply this texture to the skybox material so for that what we do is right after we load we take the skybox material and for the color so we're going to initialize the color so in it you see there's an option for the texture so for the texture bit we're going to initialize that with the texture resource so this is exactly what we loaded here a texture resource right so texture so here all we do is we take this texture that we loaded that represents the starry night image and we apply it to the skybox material now it says cannot assign property to skybox material as the lead constant obviously that error is because we're modifying the skybox material and the skybox material is marked with the lead lead means you can't modify the skybox material so we need to change this var because we want to modify it here now that error should be gone great so now we got the material with the starry night image applied as a texture to the material so we got a mesh and a skybox material ready now now let's create the entity with this mesh and material skybox entity remember in reality kit everything's an entity for this we're going to create a skybox entity so skybox entity and we're going to set the model component to this entity which defines the visual appearance of this entity we're going to do skybox entity we're going to get the list of components and we're going to set a new component like this we're going to create a model component so model component can be created with a mesh and a material both of which we have now and this defines the visual appearance of the entity so we're going to create that and make this a little cleaner so it's easier to read now for the model's mesh i'm going to pass in the large sphere that we created and for the material we're going to apply the skybox material so the mesh is a large sphere and onto that sphere we map a skybox material which represents the starry night image this is an array so we need to put that inside an array great so now we got the skybox entity ready so let's return that skybox entity because remember this function should create the skybox and return it as an entity great so that's this function ready it creates the skybox as a large 3d sphere with the skybox material mapped onto it so now let's call that here so let's skybox entity we're going to create that skybox entity and once we've created that we're going to add that to the reality view and the way we do that is content dot add and the entity that we're going to add is the skybox entity oh this is an optional so we need to unwrap it so we're going to do guard let skybox entity and if it does not exist we're going to say print error loading skybox entity and then return great so that's the reality view done so let's test all this out now so now we got the window and if i click the vr button you can see it gives a warning so i click ok and now we see it's still not working it's still a black area right we forgot to do one thing so back here in the create skybox method we create the skybox we have the large sphere and we got the material and we map the texture onto the material and with the, both the mesh and the material we create the entity but you have to remember here the materials up applied outside the large sphere right so what happens is in the immersive view you're placed right at the center as a user and the large sphere is surrounding you right so you're right at the inner center of the large sphere what that means is when you look around you see the inner surface of the sphere not the outer surface and it's the outer surface where the texture is applied which means you won't see the texture so to solve this what we need to do is simply map the texture to the inner surface of the large sphere not the outer surface so to do that simply what you got to do is take the skybox entity we're going to modify the scale and then we're going to multiply the scale with a vector with the xyz and for the x bit we're going to invert it so minus one and the rest we're going to remain constant so now if you click build and run click the vr button click ok awesome so now you can see the starry night sky and it's working as expected i also want to show you different immersion modes that we have in vision os so within immersive space what we can do is we can also vary the levels of immersion experienced by the user for that we need to enable the progressive mode we're going to go back to the starting point of the app so here we have the immersive space and its immersion style which is currently set to full now let's try putting it to progressive and we also want to enable progressive here so now if we click build and run also so now at 50 percent immersion we see part of the real world now if we set the immersion to let's say 30 percent it's going to be even smaller so do you see that that's pretty cool now before we end this video let's just do one more thing 
the starry night environment is looking a bit lonely so let's add a earth model to it as well so you can see how a 3d model would sit inside a skybox right i'm going to go back to xcode and first things i'm going to go to the starting point and i'm going to change from progressive to full mode great so now i'm going to go back to the immersive view and inside the immersive view we create the skybox entity which we've seen which is a starry night sky so this is a large sphere and the user is placed right inside <clears throat> now what we want is inside the sphere we want to place a earth model so let's create a separate function for that call it private func create earth model this should return an entity as well now for the earth model we're going to make use of reality composer pro so we're going to go to the packages here the boilerplate of this vision os code it already came with the sphere model in reality composer pro let's open this in reality composer pro so when you click open reality composer pro in here we can see there's a sphere we're going to delete that sphere instead we're going to import a model of the earth so we're going to click on the add button here and look for earth you can see there's a model here so i'm going to just going to drag that here and drop it here i'm going to collapse this now and i'm going to make sure it's positioned right at the center and to understand the coordinates basically the center is also where the user is standing right so the user is standing and the earth is here so we want to make sure the user can see the earth if we place the earth right at the origin point where the user is standing he would have to look down to see the earth right but we want it to be placed in front of him so let's assume the user is like 180 centimeter tall in the y-axis we're going to make it 180 centimeter high so if i zoom back in now you can see the earth is on top and on the z-axis i'm going to make it say like about centimeters to the front so now when we load this earth model it should appear in front of the user hopefully so let's try this out let's save this and let's go back to our xcode project now what i can do is i can load this content from this package into the immersive view so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to load an entity we can load an entity with a certain name in a bundle so we're going to call that here and the name of the entity that we want to load is scene this guy here right that's the bit that contains our earth model Again, to make it clearer, if you go back to our Reality Composer Pro, you can see this entire thing is inside the scene. So it's named scene. You can name it something else if you want. And that's the bit that we want to load here. Let's load that from the Reality Kit Content bundle. This guy here. So this is the bundle that we have here. And obviously for that, we need to import the Reality Kit Content package that we have here. So all we're doing here is from this Reality Kit Content package, we're loading the reality composer scene here which is essentially an earth placed in front of the user so let entity and because this is an asynchronous function we have to mark it with a weight and that should get rid of this error the call can throw we need to make sure we add a try before that like this so guard let entity try if such an entity is found we store that in entity if not let's throw a fatal error saying cannot load earth model we also need to change the function signature here. So after the bracket here, we're going to mark this as a sync. All this means is in this function, we do asynchronous stuff here. Now, once we've loaded the earth entity, which is the reality composer scene, we return that earth entity like that. Great. And now after we create the skybox entity, we're going to call that get earth model, get earth. So we're going to say let earth equals model. Of course, it's an asynchronous function, so we need to mark this with a weight. Great. So now we got both the skybox entity and the earth model. We already add the skybox entity to the content here. Now let's add the earth entity too. So earth entity. So this way we got two different entities inside our reality view scene. One's the skybox, the super large sphere that gives us an illusion of the environment. And then there's also the earth entity placed within. Now let's click run and let's see what this looks like. We got the button. We're going to click on it. And now we should enter the immersive space. Now, if you look around, you can see the earth models here placed right in front of us and also the skybox. 